Hi, welcome back to Mechanical PE Exam Prep. This is 6-Minute Solutions, Problem 7. A chiller uses chilled water as a distribution medium. The refrigeration cycle for this chiller operates at an evaporating temperature of 40 degrees Fahrenheit and a condensing temperature of 120 degrees Fahrenheit. The refrigerant is superheated prior to compression and subcooled before leaving the condenser. Which of the following parameters best delimits the net system refrigerating effect? Is it A, from subcooled liquid enthalpy to the enthalpy at the superheated condition, B, from the enthalpy at saturated liquid to the enthalpy at superheated condition, C, from subcooled liquid enthalpy to the saturated vapor enthalpy, or D, from the enthalpy at the saturated liquid to the saturated vapor enthalpy. And the hint is the net refrigeration effect is defined by ASHRAE as the rate at which heat is removed by the primary refrigerant from the cooling medium that transmits the refrigerating effect. So that's a bit of a mouthful, but the long and short of it is the refrigerating effect is the rate at which heat is removed by the refrigerant. So I drew a typical refrigeration cycle that fits this description on a pressure enthalpy diagram. And as you go from state four to state one, that's the evaporator. And that's where the refrigerant is absorbing heat from whatever the transfer medium is. It, it could be, in this case, it's a chiller with chilled water. So heat is being transferred from the chilled water into the refrigerant at the evaporator. So I'll put a little arrow here and say, this is Q in. You could think of Q in as being the refrigerating effect and that would be equal to the mass flow rate around the cycle times the change in enthalpy across the evaporator. So H1 minus H4. So to answer their question about what delimits the net system refrigerating effect, it's whatever H1 and H4 are. It would be easy to get tricked up here. So what is state one? State one is a superheated vapor, and I drew it that way because they said the refrigerant is superheated prior to compression. So instead of putting 0.1 right here on the right side of the saturation curve, I moved it out to the right to accommodate for some amount of superheat. We can be confident that the superheated condition is one of the things that delimits. So that keeps A in play, so it includes the superheated condition, and that keeps B in play. C doesn't make any mention of the superheated condition, so we can get rid of that, nor does D. So we have it down to two. But now let's take a moment to consider state four. State four, although I've drawn it such that it looks like it lands directly on the saturation curve, which would lead you to believe that it's a saturated liquid, there's nothing in the problem description that absolutely states that it's a, satur that it's a saturated liquid at state four. What it says is that the refrigerant is subcooled before leaving the condenser. So the condenser is as it goes from two to three. And I have drawn it that way, I put state three out past the left side of the saturation curve to show that there's some subcooling going on. But then it goes through an expansion process as it goes from three to four, and it goes vertically down. But since I don't know exactly where state three should be, I can't say for sure whether state four ends up being a saturated liquid or if it's actually out to the left a little further, in which case it could be a subcooled liquid. Or maybe three could be a little closer to the saturation curve so there's less subcooling and then go vertically down and it ends up that state four is a saturated mixture. I really don't know. But it turns out that it doesn't matter because the expansion process is isenthalpic, constant enthalpy process. That's why it's a vertical line on a pH diagram. So what that means is that regardless of what, of where state four is, whether it's saturated liquid, subcooled liquid, or saturated mixture, the enthalpy is the same as the enthalpy at state three. So H4 equals H3. And state three, we know for a fact, and we've said it a couple times now, but we'll say it again. We know for a fact state three is a subcooled liquid. So in choosing between A and B, we're gonna choose A from subcooled liquid enthalpy, state three, to the enthalpy at the superheated condition, state one. It's very tempting here to pick B from the enthalpy at the saturated liquid, which would be state four, to the enthalpy at the superheated condition, state one. But it would be wrong in the sense that we don't know for a fact that state four is a saturated liquid. 
So that's why A is the better choice. See you in the next video.